You are listening to another episode of Beyond Clean with Ace, a service of the Academy of Cleaning Excellence. I'm your host, Dave Thompson. And since you're listening, you might as well know that you're about to hear us talk about something which has to be healthy, positive, and or proactive in the cleaning industry today. In 2018, the Academy launched the Rockstar series of motivational sessions in addition to our tactical classes, which are instructed weekly around the U.S. Now, industry professionals are here to talk, share their thoughts, and let you know what's on their mind. So, turn up the sound and let's get talking. Well, folks, you're back with, uh, well, it's Beyond Clean with Ace, and we have another episode. It's December 2019, and here just before Christmas, we're getting in a whole bunch of podcasts uh, over the next couple of weeks, getting ready for 2020. And as such, I want to introduce you to a colleague of mine. We've met in many different situations, and as you'll learn today, we have something in common, um, well, a like passion, if you will. Welcome to the show, Bill Fellows. Well, thank you, Dave. So before we get into it, Bill, let's tell the audience a little bit about who you are and, uh, well, kind of what you're passionate about. Well, I, uh, I got started in the cleaning business back in February of 1966, um, working for a little mom and pop operation. Uh, met my wife there, first wife and uh, late wife, I should say, and she was uh, also in the cleaning business. Uh, we decided after we married that we would start our own company, which we did, ran for some time. Uh, she got sick uh, in 1980 uh, after several years and several different uh, groups that we went to. We discovered that she had developed a chronic reaction to the chemicals we used from that time period back in the 60s. If you know that the history, there was no OSHA back then. Uh, and many of the things that we used routinely, you can't even buy anymore. They've been taken off the market. So uh, when, by the time we learned about this, uh, we did have the MSDS sheets had come out and we were told to do HASCOM training, but it didn't impact us so much as business owners we didn't have the passion to teach that we just simply did what we had to do to be legal and so it was uh section one does this and section two does that and so on through the sheets and then sign here and we're good because we we did what osha told us to do Uh, but after we learned about her her illness uh, that all changed and I went to the distributor where I was getting my things, found out. Uh, I took all of their MSDS sheets. It was a little over 500 of them. And I entered the information in Lotus 1, 2, 3. We didn't have Excel then. So <laughs> Lotus 1, 2, 3 allowed me to sort and eliminate redundancies. And then I went on a mission to figure out what these all these terms meant. I come up with 257 terms out of those 500 sheets they don't all appear on every sheet but they were there uh didn't have the internet back in the 80s so went to a library with an unabridged dictionary and opened it up and started looking up these terms and it's amazing in the english language how a word can have so many different meanings and connotations dependent on context and it takes a lot of effort to go find that, or did back in those days, to find what was what. So I learned that some of the things that were in our chemicals, uh, as ingredients to our chemicals we were using, uh, things like LD and LC50, it indicated that a lethal dose, either applied topically or in food, killed 50% of the test animals or the lethal concentration of vapors killed 50% of the test animals. And you got to wonder, why is it even in there? What's its purpose? Well, and, to, and, and you went through all of this effort, Bill, because of a chronic situation to your most cherished uh, partner on the planet, and, and you had a passion and a reason. And 
I wasn't quite in it at, at the point that you were doing the same thing, but you know, I was still doing this in the 70s and the 80s, and I understand not having the internet. We were just getting into it in the late 80s. But you know what? People still don't go and research and do this, and it's even closer at their fingertips. Right. And that's, a, that's the point I make in the, the training classes that I do. I talk about the seven terms that every cleaning person should know on the SDS sheet. And they get amazed when they realize they don't know what these terms mean. And I'm talking to business owners at these meetings. And uh, uh, in fact, in all the people that I've interviewed, only one actually knew all the answers. He was the vice president of a major cleaning company and was so proud of himself. And I said, how can you be proud of yourself when your job is to disseminate this information and nobody else in your organization knows it? But yeah, the fact that he knew it all w w was good, but the thing is, is it's the frontline workers. Now, Bill, there's more to your story because that's just the reason that you started checking it out. But tell the folks that are listening or watching on YouTube today and are listening to our podcast, why did this become even more important? Well, the, uh, it adversely impacted my wife's health. Uh, some of the ingredients uh, that were in our chemicals, side effects were uh, cancer of the reproductive organs. She developed uh, uh, cervical cancer and after a hysterectomy, in her later part of her life, she developed ovarian cancer. Uh, it was shortness of breath was there, nausea. Uh, she had everything, every side effect that it mentioned you could get. And when I talked to the manufacturing people about it, uh, they couldn't explain why they put it in there. And they had done no studies on how long it took for that stuff to leave the body. So a housewife using the product once or twice a week, a lot different than a person who does it all night long, five and six nights a week, the cleaning business. So her health deteriorated. Uh, she became short of breath and had uh, went on to oxygen. And at the end of her life, she was on 15 liters of oxygen uh, on morphine to control the pain she was having. And uh, we lost her in 2014. Uh, Bill, I have to, uh, if, I, if I may interrupt you just a moment, I went to a movie here just recently. It's a current movie that's out right now called Dark, Dark Waters. Right. I, I have to tell you, my friend, uh, I sat there and watched the whole movie. My wife really wanted to go. And the whole time that I was watching this movie, I had to think about you. Yeah, thank you. You know, it, it's, it's one of these things whenever you see a movie, and this is, this is um, uh, a documentary of exactly what you're talking about that happened with Dow Chemical, or uh, DuPont, I'm sorry. Uh, and it, in, in the, the, well, we didn't know what was happening. We do, nobody knew, but somebody did know uh, in that particular case. Uh, I don't want to give that away, so any of you folks that are listening or watching, if you can, please watch that. It's very, very pointed, and if you're not moved uh, to tears by it, um, well, I'm just not going to go there on that one. Uh, <laughs> Bill, you know, the whole thing here is is that as business owners, you and I both during those, those times in the, the 70s and the 80s, uh, we had people that were working for us, doing cleaning, subjecting themselves to those toxic chemicals as well as we were, you know, I still today wonder about what happened to the people that worked for me as a business owner and how many impacted lives in a negative way there. Yes, and I, one of the things I regret is uh, I didn't enforce the safety things that we do they should be doing. Uh, I had people working with chemicals without wearing the gloves that they should have worn uh, and spraying mist into the air that, to allow them to inhale things, uh, carrying drinks on their maid cart 
when they were using the chemicals so you knew that stuff was getting into whatever they were drinking all those little details that I just didn't I didn't enforce it I just let people do what they wanted to do okay so let's tell the folks uh, you know this this was something that impacted you in a personal way what did this do to change your work environment as you went through this and then on into where we are today well, I, one thing I did, I put a sign above my desk, and it said, asking me to overlook a simple safety violation would be asking me to change the value I place on your life. Wow. And Can, I, can you just repeat that one more time? I want everybody to hear that. Asking me to overlook a simple safety violation would be asking me to change my, the value I have of your life. I, I, you know, the thing is, is every class that I conduct, every video that I put out, every podcast that, that, that I have, you know, safety and uh, being concerned for the, the, the health of that frontline worker is my mission. And uh, I, I think that's why we have a lot in common. You know, when I do, uh, I go out and do assessments for the painting industry management standard SIMS with the ISSA. So I'm watching these employees work, and it amazes me how often I'm there, the people aren't following the safety rules, I'm with the supervisor who says nothing, and I have to step in and, and take care of that. And, uh, yeah, you can't just walk off and let it go. I mean, that's, that, we, we, when we see it, we can't, I mean, it's, it's what we have to do, right? Correct, yeah. And some, some uh, get a little miffed at that a little bit, especially I'll even do it if I'm in a store. Oh yeah. Bill, I stand there, I tell them to get a manager over there and everybody's like, but what big deal? Well, if somebody falls, you'll think it's a big deal. <laughs> uh, it okay. Just, so, 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 uh, things have changed for you over the last few years. Um, let's tell the audience how that's changed for you. Well, um, uh, after I lost, my wife, she, she died with 20 years less in her life than what the women in her life normally live. So that's the, the, what actually happened to her as a direct result of the exposure to these chemicals. I've since remarried and my, uh, my new wife, Patty, works with me in the business and we have a real passion about teaching people how to be careful and follow the safety procedures and especially looking into the SDS sheet and truly understanding the chemicals they work with. Now, now, now your new wife and you said, Patty, if I remember right. Right. Okay. So, um, she knew what was going on. Did you know her beforehand? I, I mean, maybe I'm getting a little too personal, but I'm kind of curious there. No, uh, actually it was a mutual friend that lied to both of us. Uh, she, she told me that Patty wanted to meet me, and she told Patty I wanted to meet her, and we didn't know each other from a load of coal. <laughs> you know, living in Nashville, Tennessee at the time, and I, she lived in Florence, Kentucky, and I came up and we spent a little time together with a group at a, at a lunch, and then had conversations later. And, uh, it just blossomed into something that was really important for me. I, after the loss of the first wife, it was the first time I ever lived alone in my entire life when she died after everybody left. That's an enormously uh, lost feeling that you have. Yep, I can understand that. Loneliness is so great. And uh, Patty's put uh, peace back in my life. and It's changed my way I take care of myself because I didn't so care. So, so how did, did, did Patty uh, know about this going in, or when did you break it to her that this was your passion? Uh, did, did she warm up to it real quickly, or was she kind of like, or, is this guy really for real, or what? Well, we just enjoyed being together. So she was coming with me to any, any uh, speaking engagement or training session that I was putting on. Okay. She's come to understand the value of those things, and now she pays more attention to that herself when we're dealing with the chemicals here at the house. And, and I've seen her, uh, she'll watch somebody do something, and she'll tell me, they're not doing this right. <laughs> right. 
Now, now, there's a reason I was asking you all of that, Bill, because, you know, the thing is, is my wife, whenever I married her some 20-odd years ago, uh, was in the restaurant business. And so when we were dating, you know, her thing was as if a, a uh, server doesn't recognize you in two minutes, she leaves. And for me, uh, it's basically I go to the restroom, and if there isn't hand soap and there isn't something there to wash my hands, I leave. We wound up leaving a lot of restaurants in the early days. Yeah. And over the years, just like you, Bill, you know, she went to the thing, she saw what I was doing, and now she's just as passionate about this as I am. And she works for a, a major resort here in Orlando, uh, still in the kitchen, but she's telling them what to do and changing things that they're doing because of what we do. So, I, I mean, you know, this is the interesting thing I wanted to get at. You know, it, it's just something that gets ingrained in everybody. Oh, one of the things that we probably both do as well when you stay in the hotels, looking around your room, seeing oh. it's what, you, know, uh, it, you get a little scary sometimes about that. Uh, well, Bill, I mean, yeah, and I think this goes to what we both do day in and day out every day. You know, here at the academy, when people come to be educated, um, you know, they come in for a floor care class of some sort, uh, you know, whether it, you know, maybe a restroom class or whatever, and they think that what we're going to do is we're going to jump right in and start using the tools and everything, and three hours later, we're still talking why they're doing it and what it's doing to their health, and they're like, I never expected this. Yeah, I get that same reaction when uh, I start talking about the SDS terms, and it's it just opens up a lot of eyes, and people tend to think about it more. And one of the things I discuss with them, for anybody who's done any training in MSDS or SDS, probably one of the most boring topics you can get into. <laughs> it's hard for the speaker to stay awake, let alone the class. But, uh, the approach that I take brings it more to life and they begin to see the value in it. It's not just section one, section two. It's well, and, and this goes back to what you and I have learned, and I think there's a little bit of storytelling, which is what we both did. We told a little bit of a personal story, and this is part of, as you said, bringing to life the reality of what these issues are. You and I can do that because we've went through that, you know, I, I, I like to look at this in a little different way. Now, you and I are going to talk a number of times next year, so we don't want to cover everything today. Uh, just to let you know, audience, that's why this is probably going to be a little shorter than most of ours, because we'll save a little bit of, of stuff for next year for conversations. But what do you think is the biggest challenge for people that don't have the experiences, the personal issues that you and I have, I mean, getting these people involved with it now and understanding, what's the biggest challenge? It's just that they, because they don't understand and, and they watch others, uh, in general terms, the public in general just doesn't appreciate how important it is to understand the chemicals that they mess with a day in and day out. Uh, and well, a, a little bit of that is to, those, to the most recent things that happened you know, at uh, the Buffalo Wild Wings and the Red Robin, you know, that we, uh, you yeah. know, that we heard. I mean, you know, that's a perfect example. Yes, and that, that movie Dark Waters that you just talked about gets into that. It was filmed right here in Cincinnati, uh, where I'm living now, and uh, I've actually met several of the people who were in that movie because it was handled. Really? Uh, so it... When people come out of the theater from that, they, you're right. There's some crying going on and some, man, how could that happen? Well, it happens because people stand by and do nothing. Well, and, and the thing is, is that's not altogether too far from what's going on right now with some others. Yeah. I mean, we're still having that fallout happening, and how much of it we we probably don't even know. Yeah, you know, when I do this class, one of the things I ask them is to go home and look under their kitchen sink. <laughs> uh, they get those SDS sheets, which they can get online now. All that's real easy to find now, so it's easy yeah. to get it. And they find out that they're placing chemicals that react to one another next to one another in the, under the cabinet. And uh, So what would you tell somebody 
you know, that's listening or watching on our podcast today, what would be the first thing that they could do? I mean, obviously you're saying research the SDS, but you know, they buy stuff at the local dime store or a grocery store or hardware store. They take it home and just use it how the commercial said to use it. What should they really do? They need to take the time to look into it a little deeper because even things that are called safe uh, turn out later. We find out there's something there we didn't know about that makes it unsafe. Uh, try to do as much as you can to reduce the use of chemicals. They have a lot that are now considered environmentally preferable. They don't have the same problems that others have had, but there's also a movement towards uh, instead of green cleaning, going to what's called blue cleaning. And there are abilities now to have. Well, folks, sometimes uh, internet uh, plays tricks with us and uh, we may have lost Bill for a little bit here. You know, I think what we're talking about folks is that, yeah, there is a lot of issues when it comes to cleaning products, whether you're using them at home, or whether you're using those uh, in a commercial business. Um, I don't think we're gonna get Bill back this afternoon, uh, but uh, we'll have Bill on at another time. If he comes back, I'll let you know. Bill's gonna be a regular contributor for us in uh, 2020, um, talking about chemicals, safety, uh, workers' comp issues, et cetera. So, you know, if you have some questions or some thoughts and you'd like to, Please just get back in touch with us, you know, here at the Academy of Cleaning Excellence. We'll get those questions to Bill next year, and I'm sure we'll have some answers for you. Until we get back with you, please join us on our podcast, on our YouTube channel. Go to theacademyofcleaning.com, and you know what? You've probably heard about our Rockstar nomination program. We're going to announce in 2020 the Rockstar Custodian for 2019 and nominations are open for this next year. So please join us. Please share and like us anywhere you find us, and we'll be back with you on another podcast or YouTube video soon. Thanks for watching or listening, whichever it is.